I welcome you to this Day with Mary here at St. John's Cathedral in Portsmouth. I welcome all of you from our cathedral parish, from the parishes of Portsmouth, and those of you who've come from further afield. We've come to spend this day with the Blessed Virgin Mary, to ask her to bring us closer to Jesus Christ, her Son, to offer up the Holy Mass, to spend time with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, and to meditate in the Rosary on his birth, life, death, and resurrection. We're here also to support one another with our prayers, to pray for the needs of the Church and the world, and to pray for our families and friends. There are three particular intentions I'd like to ask you to pray for. First of all, for the evangelization and conversion of England, and for the mission of the Church in this Diocese of Portsmouth. I ask you, secondly, to pray for vocations in our diocese to all states of life and ministry in the Church, but especially to the priesthood. And I ask you, thirdly, to pray for the poor, the needy, the marginalised. Let's remember especially those affected by natural disasters at this time in the Caribbean. So let's begin this wonderful day by calling on Mary's help using the prayers set before us in our booklets. Ave Maria. Three uh, weeks ago, I made a short pilgrimage to Turin to walk in the footsteps of the patron saint 
of the youth of our diocese, Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati. We stayed with his niece at the family villa, which is in a small town at the foothills of the Alps. And it was there as a child that Pier Giorgio developed a keen love for hiking, for climbing, and for mountaineering. Indeed, he pinned to his bedroom door, mountains, 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 I love you. And on a photograph taken in June 1925, just a month before he died, showing him dangling on a rope over a precipice, he scrawled the words, Verso l'alto, upwards to the heights. Although the life and soul of every student party and every student gathering, Pier Giorgio also had an intense spiritual life. He loved Our Lady and he loved the Rosary. When a teenager at the villa, in case his alarm cock failed in the morning, he'd tie a piece of string to his wrist that dangled out through the window so that the gardener who came in at the crack of dawn could always pull that to wake him up. He'd then run five miles up the mountain, a 2,000 foot climb, to mass at the great Marian shrine of Oropa with a bunch of flowers in his hand to give to the Madonna. Indeed, he also pinned to his bedroom door that prayer from the Divine Comedy of Dante, O Virgin Mother, daughter of your Son, you gave such nobility to our flesh that he who made humanity did not disdain to make himself a creature. He would have loved this day with Mary. Indeed, may he pray for each one of us here today. Mary is central. Mary is central to us because it was through her that human history was changed radically. As today's Gospel said, the Virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. Mary gave birth to God the Son, who was not only the intended culmination of all creation and all human history, but also our Saviour, the one who would free us from sin, suffering and death. Everything that the ancient prophecies foretold, we heard in that first reading today and in the Gospel, has thus come true. But more, from the foot of the cross, Jesus gave us his mother to be our mother too, which is why from the earliest times Christians have had an immense veneration for Our Lady, turning to her for help in every need. She, in her turn, has never failed to love us, to pray for us, to inspire us with her example of fidelity to her Son, whatever the cost. Put simply, I've said this before, she is the best loved member of the Church. Put simply, she is the most sublime creature God has ever made. Put simply, she is the most blessed, the most holy, and the most beautiful of all women. But in spending this day with Mary, 
we must also honour her spouse. In fact, whenever we spend time with Mary, we also meet her husband, St Joseph, strong, silent, humble, decisive, a man of integrity. In today's Gospel, we learn that not only did Mary do God's will, but so did St. Joseph. In the very next line after the passage we heard, we're told, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel told him to do. He took his wife to his home and she gave birth to a son and he named him Jesus. Both Mary and Joseph show us how to do God's will, which is why, along with the Blessed Mother, St. Joseph too is central. He is central, not only to the birth and life of Jesus, but in our own lives too as Christians. Indeed, in our secular culture, with its mixed up sexual ideologies, its gender wars, its broken families. It's crucial always to place Joseph alongside Mary. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I give you my heart and my soul. That sums up our purpose today. In this Mass, as we crown Mary our Queen, let's ask her prayers and those of her spouse too. May she unite us with Jesus, her Son. May she help us always in our lives to do God's will. Indeed, may she bring us one day to heaven, to Jesus, to that true, genuine, lasting human happiness and fulfilment for which we long. May become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. Immaculate Mary, Mother of the Church and Queen of Heaven, and patron of this wonderful Diocese of Portsmouth, as this parish family of St John's Cathedral, we join together to consecrate ourselves to your Immaculate Heart. We consecrate to you all that we are, all that we have, all that we love. We consecrate to you our bodies, our hearts and our souls. To you we consecrate our families, our priests, our clergy, our religious and all our lay faithful and all who serve here in this parish, all our parish ministers. We entrust to you the sick and the dying and also the souls of the faithful departed from this parish. We want everyone in this parish to come to know you more fully and to share in the benefits of your intercession of love. And that our consecration may be truly effective and persevering, bearing the fruits of a rich interior life, 
we renew today our own consecration as Christians, as disciples of Christ through baptism. We promise to follow joyfully and humbly the doctrines of the Catholic Church, always faithful to the teaching of the Holy Father, our Bishop and the Magisterium. We promise to show you faithful devotion, to listen to the Word of God and to read it attentively, to obey God's commandments, to participate in the feasts of the Church and to seek the strength of the sacraments, especially reconciliation and the Eucharist. Pray for us now that our hearts will be on fire with the love of the Holy Spirit, that we will go forth in mission and service to all, especially to the neediest. Pray for us that we may always be ready to offer our prayers sacrifices and sufferings to bring about the triumph of the sacred heart of Jesus in our souls and in those of our sisters and brothers in this our parish and in the entire world. <laughs> 